Uh, my name is Jennifer Bingham and I've been in the wine industry for about eight or nine years now. I just love wine, I love the culture, I love how it bring pe brings people together and for me I just love always learning about wine and there's always something new to know and something to share with other people about wine. Um, a good wine is a wine that's balanced. It has the tannins and the acidity and the alcohol are all in balance with each other. And that's what I look for first and foremost before anything else when I'm assessing a wine for the store. It might not be my style, but as long as it's balanced, I know that people who like that style will like that wine. This is a bottle of red burgundy. So, uh, red from burgundy is a Pinot Noir grape. And to taste the wine, there's a few different steps that you go through. First of all, you look at the color of the wine. And usually you're supposed to look at it against a white background. So if you have like a white piece of paper, that's an easy way to see the color more clearly. So there's like a grade, but there's like um, more of a ruby color or a purple color or getting into like a tawny or a brown color. And this one's definitely ruby. You can also look at the edge and if it has like an orange or a brown rim, that's an indication that it's a slightly older wine. And then you can swirl it. You let the oxygen get into the wine and it helps the aromas come out. And then you smell it and you can get your nose way in the glass. So I like big glasses like this. You take a few whiffs of it and you try to um, smell what fruit smells you smell. So usually you decipher between red fruits versus black fruits. So I get a lot of more red fruits on this wine, like raspberry and strawberry. And usually you try to pick out at least three different fruits that you smell because it helps you assess what the wine could be. Um, and then you look at non-fruit aromas like earthiness, like mushrooms. Um, if there's any wood, like oak or vanilla flavors. So you try to pick out all of those things just from the nose. You can get a lot more from the nose than from the palate. And then you can take a sip of it. You kind of swish it around in your mouth. You get some oxygen going into your mouth and it lets you taste it better. Um, and you assess like the levels of acidity. You decide if the acidity is low, medium, or high. You decide if the tannins are low, medium, high. Tannins are like the drying sensation in your mouth. Um, and then you decide if the alcohol is low, medium, or high. This one is um, kind of lo low tannins, medium alcohol, medium plus acidity. And the higher acidity usually means that it's an old world wine or like a French or Italian wine. And lower acidity means it's like a new world wine like California or something like that. And then you assess the finish, how long the finish is. So the main three types of wine are white wine, rosé, and red wine. Um, white wine is made when they take a grape and they just crush the cut crust the juice out of the skins and so they don't let the skin sit with the juice at all. So it's more crisp and more clean. There's no tannins. Um, it usually has higher acidity than red wine. It's served cold and it's kind of easy to drink and really pairs well with a lot of different types of food and pairs very well with cheeses. Um, and it's great to drink on a hot day. Rosé wine is um, becoming more fashionable. A lot of people in America still don't understand rosé, but from what I understand, a lot of French people drink it all the time. Um, <laughs> I love rosé, and it's 
a great alternative to red wine because it's made from red grapes and they let the skin sit with the juice for just like a matter of hours instead of days where they make a red wine. So it has some of the fruit flavors that you get from red wine, but more delicate and more light and easy. Um, you serve it chilled like you serve white wine, so it's just a refreshing alternative to white, especially in the summer, especially in Florida. And then red wine is mostly what people drink all the time. Um, it's got fuller tannins. The, they let the skin sit with the juice for a few weeks, so it macerates. And so you get a more structured wine, fuller body, fuller tannins. Um, and you get a lot of complexity from that as well. So there's a big difference in uh, labeling and how old world wines are labeled versus New World wines, Old World being European wines. So New World labels are a little bit easier for Americans to read and understand, so I think that is why they kind of start there when they start learning about wine and drinking wine. Um, this is a New World label, this is a California wine, and it's a Cabernet Sauvignon, and it clearly states on the label that it's what the grape is, which is Cabernet Sauvignon. And when Americans are learning about wine, they kind of start to learn what grape varietals they like. And so then they can easily pick out the Cabernets and they can better make better decisions about what they like and what they want to buy. Um, whereas in France, this is a French label. This is from Bordeaux. It's uh, Chateau Champs de Durand from saint emilion So it's mostly Merlot. And um, it doesn't tell you anywhere on this label what, what grapes are in the bottle. So that's really confusing for Americans. Um, I happen to know that it's mostly Merlot with some Cabernet Sauvignon in it. So, um, And then, same with Italy, an Italian label is telling you the place. Morellino de Scanzana is the place in Italy. It's in Tuscany. And um, I just happen to know that it's a blend of Sangiovese, Cab, and Merlot. So a normal consumer wouldn't really know like what this wine tastes like by looking at the label. And then same with uh, a Spanish label, it's labeled by the region, which is Rioja, and Crianza, which is the level of oak that it's received, and then the producer, but nowhere on the label does it say the grape varietal. So it's really hard for people to understand like what it tastes like unless they have somebody helping them. They've been making wine in France as long as they've been making wine in Italy for a really long time, but the varietals grown in France are more of the international varietals that you see all over the world, like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Noir, Syrah, Grenache. Those varietals you see grown in more New World regions like California, Australia, South America. So all of those varietals in the New World are always compared to the French counterpart. So France is definitely just kind of a standard to live up to, and the style from the respective regions of France is always um, really widely known and tried. To, people try to attain that style when they're making wine elsewhere. A couple of French words that we use in America to talk about wine. Um, cépage is one, and that just means a blend. And Bordeaux is a traditional wine that is a blend of usually, it can be up to five grapes, but usually it's mainly Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Cabernet Franc. And so cépage is just, if you ask what's the cépage, you're asking like what percentage of each grape are in the bottle. Um, another wine from France that's a cépage is a Chateauneuf de Pop, like or a Côte de Rhone from the Southern Rhone Valley. And then another word that we use a lot is terroir. And normal consumers don't use that word as much, but people in the industry use the word terroir, which is a French word that doesn't have like a literal transla translation in, in English, but it basically means like everything that goes in to that grape, uh, like land, where it's grown, and the weather that year, and the aspect of the hill that it sits on, like how much sunlight it gets, and all of the things that go into making a sense of place.
So there's a lot of talk about organic wine lately. It's kind of trendy. I think in France they've just been making wine naturally and organically for a long time. And in America it's more of a trend and it's more of a deliberate process. So I think when people are looking for organic wine, I do have some that are labeled organic, which is a process for the winery to go through. But I often steer them towards French wine because I know that in like the Loire Valley and in Burgundy and in the Rhone Valley, they've been doing it organically for a really, really long time. And it's just not, it just doesn't say that on the label, but it's still produced in an organic way. If you have an organic American wine next to a non-organic American wine, I don't think you can taste the difference per se, but a lot of people like knowing where it comes from and they like that aspect of it. I have an awesome job being a sommelier and it is pretty fun. Um, I get to taste a lot of wine. The, there's a lot of different avenues you can take to become a sommelier. Um, you can, I think one of the most effective is just being immersed in it, like being a server at a nice restaurant with a nice wine list and learning under another sommelier who knows a lot about wine and you have to read a lot about wine and you have to taste a lot of wine so you can just become more and more knowledgeable about it. But there's also certifications you can take to say that you're an official sommelier, which I've done a number of those. There's a, at least five different credentials you can get through different organizations that you go take a test and you pass it and you t they tell you that you're a sommelier. Um, I think I am definitely still a minority in that I'm a female sommelier, um, especially being a younger woman. Um, that's part of why I did do a lot of the sommelier certifications early on, because a lot of people would ask me, are you even old enough to drink? And so I could be like, yes, I am a certified sommelier. It's really refreshing and nice to see more and more women interested in wine, because I think it's a great career. And they say that women have better palates than men, so we're going to take over. <laughs>